tale. It's a new dawn. It's a new day. It's a new start of a a, a new vir- virtual day in uh, humankind. Yep, that's definitely definitely what we're going with there. Um, welcome back. Uh, we are playing Humankind. This is our second uh, episode, so hopefully you guys enjoyed the first one and are sticking around. And I am very excited to get to see some more of this game, to be honest. Kind of see maybe a little bit of the age progression. We're currently in this kind of like, uh, I don't know if we're in like a literal tutorial run or if it's uh, what it is, but we're going to load our game of the Olmex. All that was and is and will be is written in the stars. Because Olmec lives on the moon and they are actually aliens. <laughs> um, I never knew that there was such a thing as a... Oh, got a little spinny thing. Hopefully the game's going to keep working here. But I never actually knew that there was such a thing as a society called the Olmex. It might honestly not be. Um, here, hold on. Let's find out while we load in here. Slash while my game maybe crashes. Nope, it didn't crash. Nice. Olmex. Let's see. Olmec, a member of prehistoric people inhabiting the coast of Veracruz in western Tabasco on the Gulf of Mexico. Establishment was probably the first Mesoamerican civilization. That's super interesting, actually. Uh, being a, like, Mesoamerican, like, I guess that'd make them, like, kind of the progenitor of, like, Aztec culture, potentially. Uh, very, very, very cool. Checking to see that all my stuff is. We're actually going to get to see some Aztec temples here. Uh, coming up fairly soon. I think that we'll, uh, I've got like a week and then we're going to be heading off to Cancun, which is actually my second time to Cancun this year. Um, but is my first, first and second time out of the country ever. So this time we're going to make sure to plan a little trip out to see, see some temples. Always, always big hype about that kind of stuff. But Humankind has been very cool so far. Uh, definitely look forward to see kind of the one of the problems that these 4X games will generally have. Um, a part, there, there's, there's two things, right? When you're playing on higher difficulty, kind of get a lay of the land here a little bit. We have our Nubians, and their capital up here that we're most likely going to war with very soon. Um, but two of the big things that happen in these kind of games, or at least in the civilization, when you're playing in the higher difficulties, the computers start off so powerful, there's just nothing you can do about them in the early game. And also, things can get kind of monotonous towards the end of the game, because you're just like, you know, you're doing a military victory, and there's just like, never surrendering, and you're just trying to completionist wipe out every civilization on the map sort of thing um we had a victory over here cool um we had our scouts as warriors very very nice so what are we working on currently we have our horse ranch that's going up and then it's going to be followed immediately by the training of a couple of warriors which we're going to love um these are still establishing Got another area over here that looks like it can be pretty decent for us. We've got a lot of spice, and it looks like our trade potential is going to be pretty high, which we will enjoy. Um, I think our next kind of goal is to get our influence up um, and start turning some of these outer areas into, like, cities and stuff like that. Zone of control. The existing tiles um, to a hostile army or unit called their zone of control. Moving through a zone of control will cost you more movement points. Okay, so that's a layer there. We can just go ahead and instant resolution fight this bear. Nice. Lost lost a little bit. I didn't see any, like, real uh, super strategic um, stuff that we were able to do there. Is there a really Over this rotation? Way. Yes, these guys are then going to move. That cost all of our movement to do that battle. Um, do I have these guys doing anything specific? I think I was wanting to head up here to back up my other boys, 
But yeah, we had seen this mammoth over here. We definitely, definitely want to do something about that. Um, but these guys, we got to bring our boys home. Because they are hurting a little bit. We need to pick a new, a new thing. Spearmen or chariots. Um, honestly, both of these seem pretty good. Uh, let's view our technology, actual, our actual technology screen. Because... We have a unique unit that's gonna be in here somewhere. So we got like barracks, a battering ram, fishmonger, chariot, okay, food market, public fountain. This allows us to research copper, build watchtowers. It's most likely gonna be kind of our our path here. I swear that we were supposed to have a unique unit. It should be in this uh in this zone somewhere. Oh, these javelin throws. I believe that these are our unique. Made of obsidian, obsidian, hardwood, or bone. Olmec javelins. Yes, so we want to research carpentry next. So we'll start creating some javelin throwers that should help us in our war efforts here. Okay. Uh, population gain. Anka's population has gained one. Nice. Acknowledged. World Deed Unlocked. The wonderful Kawa Aijin has been unlocked by another empire. Okay, acknowledge that. Um, so, these guys, chilling. There's really nothing that like we can actually do apart from relocate the outpost for a lot of these um, until they become a city. Got a new civic, founding myths and literacy. First civic unlocked. Civics have... Uh, can be seen as a collection of customs, traditions, and laws. Okay. By what right do we rule? Ooh, this is cool. Founding myths. By what right do we rule? Uh, when voting uh, a civic, you can choose either option, but each path must affect the empire in numerous areas. Diplomacy, region, economy, military, etc. Civics can even unlock new game mechanics. In addition to these efforts, all civics affect the ideology of the empire and the resulting bonuses. Okay. We have 47 stars to vote with. We have enough influence, otherwise, provided we have enough influence. Okay, okay, okay. So this is pay progress or tradition. We're currently leaning, looks like we're leaning towards tradition currently. I see. Influence on main power, plus free faith. Okay. So we get, we have natural right. Okay, okay, so we spend Oh, this I understand now. We have natural right here. We claim inherent domain over the land and beasts or divine mandate. Our supremacy is ordained for we are the chosen ones, which will either take us towards progress or take us towards tradition. Um, emphasize doing things the way they've always been done. Repudiating new ways of seeing the world. I mean, I am a big fan of progress. So let's go ahead and take Why was this right. even a question? Let's keep it simple. We've been here. It's our place. Yeah, you got it, Mr. Narrator Man. Uh, hold on, let's get my light turned on here. Okay, civics are made available based on the current game context and are voted for, etc., etc. Okay, cool. Um, we also have legitimacy. What style of laws does the Empire use? This is also a traditional versus one. We have customary laws. Historical precedent and tradition serve as the basis for our judgment. Laws will be debated, classified, and codified for perpetuity. The one pushes us even further um, towards this. This gives us minus 50% on creative outpost cost, minus 20% on attach outpost cost, and 20% on absorb city cost. Interesting. So we get us a pretty good saving on creating an outpost here. But I think we're Just doing okay on outposts. Once you discover writing, you can literally throw the book at them. Okay, very cool. So we've kind of got this big wheel, it looks like, that we'll kind of branch into as we go into things. Very cool. I like that civic tree system. Okay, so you're still cooking on that horse ranch. Awesome. Um, who's next? We got a sleepy army who's about to ransack this lair. We've got this guy, uh, unit veterancy. One of your units gain a veterancy level. Units acquire experience by fighting other units. Once the unit gathers enough experience, it will gain a star, three-star veterancy level. 
increasing its combat strength. Once unit gains its veterancy level, we go. Come over Interesting. Here. Oh, there's something for us to get over here. Uh -huh. Make your way that way, friendo. You're ransacking. Are you the one that just gained veterancy? I don't know. Ransack. So you, you ransack. Okay. Oh, that's right. I always forget that you have to actually select the area that they're ransacking. My brain is just like, yeah, they're standing in that spot. It's totally fine, dude. Follow me. Uh, actually, have these guys go there real Follow quick. Me. We'll split our armies up a little bit there. End our turn. Nothing too crazy. We're kind of on a lull here, for sure. Ransack successful. What do we plunder? Plus 22 gold. I like it. Attitude change. The Nubians now feel differently about you. To what do I owe the pleasure? Their relations, peace. Our relations are peace. Um, They are now hesitant towards me. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. We proposed a white peace. Um, they are grievances against us. Our ideology proximity is high. And we have refused their treaty. We are much more powerful than them, apparently. Interesting. Okay, let me out of there. Um, we should be good. Curiosity collected. Found a curiosity of animal remains. Got some science and stars. Beautiful. Also over here, science and stars. We love to see it. Uh, we still need to get these dudes back over here. Probably get these dudes... Let's go. Like, moving out that direction. One more turn for our... Whatchamacallit. Our ponies. Right. More ponies. I'd like to see it. End our turn. And... Looks like we have something going on here. Blades of the Empire. As your horizons widen, your armies grow in lockstep with your ambitions. Now with military power spread over several regiments, it's time to decide the nature of the soldiers who compose your army. Army composition. Okay. So we have liberty or authority. Conscripted warriors will save us the cost of raising soldiers from the crib or forge from the youngest age. Professional warriors will give us stronger armies. Plus one combat strength or minus 30 on unit industry cost. Ooh. I like this. I like the minus 30 on... This should improve efficiency and camaraderie. But it'll probably cause a lot of complaining. <laughs> it'll probably cause a lot of complaining. Um, what is this? Carpentry researched. Nice. We now have javelin throwers. Collected a curiosity as well. I offer an excellent They wish to... The Nubians mm -hmm. wish to trade this with needs... us. Careful consideration. They have a lot more fame than us. They're currently actually first in fame. We have basically no fame. Uh, we w They want to trade luxuries. I don't think so, man. I think that I'm just going to go to war. Oh, no. We've got some FPS issues. Hold on. Hopefully that'll help us out a little bit. Close down. Ugh. FPS issues, man. Uh, let's see if I can't hop into the video settings to fix that a little bit. Change it to fast. We'll see how that, the, the audio, the video settings are a little bit, uh, I would say uniquely, uh, first how's the wrong term. Oh, let's do one set of warriors and then make ourselves one spearman. That does sound good. Um, what's our population like on these areas? Oh, these have no population. Interesting. So, uh, having this attached, what does it actually get? Attach, attach. Where, where was the uh, that attach option? Where'd it go? 
Oh, we have to have this selected, and then we click this to attach. Okay, cultural conversion of this territory will be achieved in one turn. Select to open the site. I think we're okay. Um, but hopefully that helps speeds up some of this process and maybe gives us some more um, population ability. I think that seems like a pretty good plan. Come over here. These guys move there. These guys are heading back to the outpost. Perfect. I don't want to peace with you. Still. Right All right. We are indeed going to war very soon. Bear, ooh, I think this thing. Uh, these boys are a little bit lost, but it looks like there's a uh, Cadians. I don't know who you are. These mercenaries are exhausted. Oh, our boys are exhausted too, but they're well supplied. Um, next up is I think we go. I mean, getting the getting the stuff that's easy to get, I think, is usually a good bet. So we'll work on the calendar there. Let's go. You head over here. Keep picking up some stuff, and hopefully we can get enough to turn some more of our stuff into cities. Breathtaking Tezeka Forest. Nice. Very breathtaking, yes, indeed. Okay, uh, these guys are going to fight this. Um, I think we just should just instant resolution this. Oh, it's a draw. Both units died. Interesting. Okay. Off we go. Let's see how this guy goes. We have a new thing. The weight, the walking wounded. During the recent brutal battle, many so soldiers sustained horrific life-changing injuries. Before returning to San Lorenzo, for some, their whole character was changed, becoming more aggressive, demented, or unable to bear others' presence. Others suffer physical wounds. Some forced to use crutches or carts to move around. Among the citizens, fear mixes with admiration as they spy on them in the street. Your lead will be vital. How do you welcome the crippled soldiers? Glorify them, of course. So we can patriotic San Lorenzo or celebrating on San Lorenzo. Interesting. So this gets us... That's such a huge reduction on the unit making. There's no way I'm going to not glorify these boys, though. Yes, they are wonderful. And we also have warriors now. So we're going to see what we where we can march these boys to. Alrighty. Uh, hold on one second. We're going to have a little cut here. And I'm going to be right back. And we are. So. We have our first set of warriors. So it's such a long march. Long and cold getting to uh getting to our neighbor's border here. But I think it's gonna be worth it. Get you there. So I can now have you regroup. Who are these? Wait, these are warriors from the Acadians. Oh, hold on. These are NPC warriors. I need to deal with these, okay. I believe. Um, let's have Follow you go to their encampment. Okay, so this is getting 100%. Oh, so we we do have like a chop, like a clear forest ability too. Um, which is pretty good. So we need some of our units. Calendar research, nice. Knowledge. Keep moving. Era star unlocked. One of the scientist stars has been earned. Nice. Okay. These boys found some remains. Totally good. Send you guys back towards Anka. Next up, we're going with bronze working. We're going to end our turn there because we do have some war on the horizon. We gain population San Lorenzo. Cool. Transact successful. What did we get? Gain some gold, it looks like. Over this way. Tier. Our scouts are killing it. Curiosity gained. For another 40 gold. Uh, we could maybe even... Got one turn left on this. What, what is this... Uh, what is this thing telling me? 
Baby, I'm Don't a gangster too, but it takes two to tango. Okay. Send this here. Turn. What do we got? Let's go up here. We now have spear throwers. Perfect. Uh, we are unable to build. No, we are able to build more more units here. So let's go ahead and make uh, some more javelin throwers. It only takes us two turns. Is kind of pog. Um, and I'm kind of feeling that we should uh, get some of our scouts kind of centralized and get them into a party with each other. Yeah, so I want you to move this way as far as possible because we do want to find find that enemy army. Follow me. If possible. Where the heck did they go, dude? Okay. Next. You're moving in. You're yeah. moving here. Now, so now this is a level three. Let's go. Nice. Population gain in San Lorenzo again. Very good. Very good. Uh, looks like we're staying pretty even with our, like, rate of production of these guys, which I think is very, very cool. So we'll go with two warriors and two javelin throwers. And right off the bat here. Got a curiosity collected. I don't know where these dang boys went, dude. There was just, like, an army in this area, and now there's kind of nothing. Which is fine. Let's start uh, start getting some of our soldiers kind of into into position here. Because you are going to want to go join up with you. And create your religion. Polytheism or shamanism. Plus one faith per population. Plus five faith per number of attached territories. So we don't, we are very tall, but we are pretty wide. Um, so let's do polytheism. Okay, uh, also, I can't help but notice that our um, ability to create a city, extracting resources. Resources are naturally occurring deposits of valuable commodities. Um, ones with cultural or economic interests are luxury resources. All those should be blah, blah. Empire set up to access a resource by constructing an outpost in the territory where the resource is found and building an extractor deposit. Okay, so it wants us, we are now able to uh, extract some of this, uh, some of this stuff. Outpost management, yes, okay. Um, so we want a city, right? We have these territories kind of attached, right? We've got San Lorenzo and uh, looks like whatever city this is here uh, that's attached to it to kind of increase San Lorenzo's borders. We want something that's a little bit further out here. Maybe we do Anka and turn it into a city. Very nice. A holy site is available for construction. Holy sites are key to producing faith, thereby gaining more followers of your religion, as well as unlocking religion tenets. Holy sites, just like uh, cultural wonders, are shared product, which can be built by several cities at once to speed up the production. Cool, I like that. Um, here, we do want to make an Artisan's Quarter. This gives me one gold and one of that. That sounds pretty good. Um, we can't afford any more, but we are very, very happy currently. Oh, wait, no, you, you, you want to stay. Over here. I, I want to cancel, cancel your request. Sorry, friend. These are warriors. Kind of hard to tell what people are. I guess you could hypothetically have like scouts and warriors in the same. Um, you are just going to rest. We're keeping eye on. We're going to end turn. Okay. Muspelheim. We could uh, theoretically attach it. Let's go ahead and do that. Now we have these two like larger city states. That I think is pretty pog. Yes, we want to build artisans' things. 
I don't know what doing what I just did actually did, but uh, I'm happy about it. 104 to attach this next territory, okay. So it's going to inevitably like start costing us more and more, of course, to uh, attach these new areas. You're still going to go meet up with them. Uh, and these warriors are going to keep moving down so they can eventually meet up with their boys. Uh, you're going to continue turn and then turn. We have something new, Aerostar Unlock, Artisan Star, nice. Understood. Um, what do we got here? The first calendar. The invention of the calendar heralded a glorious day in the Empire's history. Now with two major cities and numerous farming affairs needed to be harmonized across the land, it's time to standardize this calendar. Traders must have an easy means of synchronizing their activities. By what means do you wish to track the days? Solar or lunar? Um, so this is going to lunar is um, it takes us back on the tradition. Um, solar moves us forward towards progress a little bit more. So let's go with the solar calendar. Um, we are indeed not being very uh, traditionalist here. It is totally fine. Uh, something for something for our boys here. Let's make a garrison. We can build a garrison somewhere like out here. Here's a preview from Yay. So it gets plus five from an adjacent district. Like, right? Yeah, so if I were to build a garrison in here, that would have 15. But what does a garrison actually do for us? Stability, combat strength, combat units adjacent to the district. Okay. Um Da-da. Base for fresh soldiery. Garrison also gives strength to those who fight in its shadow and can be placed far from the city walls. Okay, so let's go ahead and place it far from the city walls. Um, just to kind of see, like, that might be a nice as, like, a place where things start spawning. Potentially. Uh, we do want to, like, kind of get some of these upgrades here. So let's just get these guys rolling. That's going to be our next 33 turns. So we'll have some nice stuff to fast forward through. This is my warrior tribe. You guys are actually chilling for a moment. You're going to be meeting up with them. going to take you a couple turns to get there. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Sorry, just a little message on my phone real quick. Uh, Lieutenant Lorenzo converted to a new religion. Acknowledge. Uh, these boys, we're going to start start our trek up north here. And we just need one more turn for these guys to meet up. These are our scouts, independent people. The city was founded by independent people. They claimed their own territory. will not expand further and will, in time, decline. It's like the city to see how to interact with them. Okay. The Dur Karazu. Paying money or influence to, for the patronize action. Give an increase in your relationship with the Senate of people per turn, showing your support and strength in their empire. With time, you'll reach thresholds that will unlock special actions, depending on the nature of the nation. Violent or peaceful, understood. Uh, you guys are progress driven. You guys are. Um, look like you're kind of neutral on that. You're authoritarian slightly. Uh, we currently have 100% kinship with them. So yeah, we'll, we'll chuck in a buck. They're violent. Um, and seen it. They have a city. Okay. You know what? Actually, a good thing that we can do here uh, is use this as kind of a practice run for our inevitable conquest of this particular continent. So, we're going to be using them as a trial run here going to be going to war with them. New civic independent peoples. Show details. Uh, mercenary armies, why let your own blood be spilled when we can pay others to fight? Our empire will become stronger by opening our arms to new people. Um, enact this civic to pay an addition. This is higher army cost and this is assimilate cost. Okay. Um, I mean, I like the assimilate idea. Moves us towards homeland as opposed to world. Um, you know, the higher army, I, I don't generally mess with the, like, sub, 
people very often. We'll, we'll see we'll go with mercenary these independent right people now. end up as shock troops, cannon fodder, or respected allies. True. Um, and we'll get these dudes moving forward here. Yes, very much yes. If I were to do this and institute a manual battle, um, yeah, I think that this is good. I think this deployment works. We're going into our manual battle, so they're deploying that way. Uh, we'll have these guys move in there and initiate their battle. These guys initiate their battle. Uh, kind of getting our asses kicked, though. Will do. Hopefully we can get some kind of flanking bonus here. Um, hold their flag is our goal. Okay. So we hold our flag for a couple turns, and then we... Uh, okay, that makes sense. Hold position. So they're much stronger when they're defending versus, uh, okay, I understand now, but we should have an easier time holding this flag, we can hodl here, uh, so what happens if I, like, bring this guy up to defend, and we just, like, we're on full defense, and we just hold the flag here, these guys might end up getting their asses kicked, but it gets these dudes out of, uh, I think that we can take out here. Now that they're not defending. Um, I think that that says that they technically live here. But they're going to be very, very much weakened. On that a little bit. This is fine, because we've held the flag and claimed the victory in the Battle of Dur Kargalazu. Okay, that, that was a pretty heavy blow to our scout forces there. So we're going to bring these warriors up. That is indeed what the warriors are supposed to do. World deed unlocked. Sacred ground. Muspelheim is converted to a new religion. Okay. And these guys are going to keep moving in. Come over here. Towards Understood. the city. Uh -huh. and turn. Getting a pretty good amount of resources here. Lots of sage farming. Moving on up. You go here. Regroup a little bit. You keep heading in towards the city. Prepare your assault. The siege begins. Our side is weaker overall. Continue the siege of the city and progress towards your next siege weapon. Okay, siege begins. You may review the balance of power as well as a level of fortification in the battle panel. As you abandon or maintain the siege or launch an assault, which will lead to the usual battle confirmation phase. The longer you maintain a siege, the more siege weapons you'll have at your disposal, provided these have been researched. Don't think that they have been researched. Um... While the number of militia units that the defender will have will at their disposal increases. Okay. Um, okay, okay, okay. So we're not strong enough yet. Yes. Don't siege. Wait, why are you running away so far? No! You're running away so far. Listen, friendos. Off we go. We must siege Dur Kalazu. And Dur Your people see it. As a place of safety and a symbol of power. Nice, we got our Only bronze your working. friends know of the extensive wine cellar. <laughs> None of your friends know of the extensive wine cellar. Okay, you guys are healing. I want these two forces to join together and so that we can move in on this siege. City stability. Uh, stability of city is a decree you control over it, blah, blah, blah gets too low, bad things can happen. Understandable. Our stability is indeed going down. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to build an Olmec head. Going to lose a bunch of stability, but gain um, 
Okay, we lose some crafting, but we gain some uh, farming ability. Farming ability kind of sucks in this area, I'm not gonna lie. Not going to lie. Now let's go into our science here. Um, the wheel organized warfare uh, does get us some siege weaponry. Uh, I won't come in handy this turn in particular, but let's see. Let's see what we do here. We now have a four strong actual military uh, unit. Let's go. Going to end our turn. Population gain in San Lorenzo. Love to see it. Yes, sir. Uh, what is this? Is this a battle? Events. Uh, events will occur. Yes, I understand that an event. Oh, is an event actively occurring? The game of prophecy. With the empire thriving, a new game hailing from a foreign land beguiles the population. Everywhere you go, the distinctive game board and pieces are catching your eye. Insisting on a public demonstration, you play the game under instruction in your palace court. But the event has a sting in the trail. Uh, event has a sting in the tail. The game is reckoned to be from a a form of divination as well as entertainment. Gasps could be heard as the game's prophecy became clear. You are fated to lose everything. What will you do? Uh, pay 80 gold to silence them. Every witness should be paid off. Or um, we overlook it or we heed it. We lose science. We lose some stability for 10 turns. Or we just pay 80 gold. Just pay everyone off. We got plenty of money currently. Uh, that should be fine. So, battle confirmation. Our side is stronger overall. We must defend our flag. Manual battle. Uh, we want our warriors here. Um, yes, you, you need to go there. You need to go there. And I believe we just set up something like this. We can confirm our deployment. So here's the thing. We're on the defensive now. I think that being on the defensive plus having ranged units is going to be huge for us. Check this out. Have these guys. Oh, they're outside of the line of sight. Oh man. Oh, are these javelin throws just actually uh use the penalty to his combat strength and defending against close combat attacks? Right, but why can't I attack at a range? You ask too much. You ask too much. Um, I mean I guess that we are fine with chilling out here. Uh, we could actually potentially send this guy around the back to do some to do some ambush strats. Uh, these guys are definitely defending. This guy is going to be taking some heat. Totally fine. That won't work. Um, oh no, there's no path back here. That's not possible. Oh no. Okay. Well, I thought I made a cool a cool strat to like get over there, but it doesn't look like that's quite gonna work. Which is still fine. These boys are just defending, and this guy, because we can't just actually attack anyone, is all. Oh, the warriors moving in. It's a little scary. A little scary. We're still hanging in there though. All right. So now. Um, we need one more round of defending our flags. We're gonna yeah. move this guy back. We're gonna move this guy oh, forward and have him uh, throw an attack at oh, Javelin throwers. Uh, okay, so they do pretty good damage. And they don't probably just like don't get retaliatory strike. Yeah. Throw an attack there. Throw this guy onto there. End our round. Weaken their armies, battle round limit. Battle limit is for blah, blah, blah. Battle will continue next turn. Okay, continue turn. Aventa, population game. It's the opponent's turn. They are making their uh, combat things. Okay, so we still stay in this like combat mode. Very interesting. Okay, so I acknowledge this. Acknowledge this, uh, and we need to wrap up this combat, hopefully. Nice. Battle at Dur Kazalagu. 
I almost said that right on accident. So now that this city is kind of ours, like how do we, I can assault our side is stronger overall. Yes, I would like to assault. We have no siege engine unlocked yet, but um, let's see if we can get a little manual battle action going here. I'm on it. Get this here. Uh, get these guys Off over here, probably. Because these guys don't actually have range. They don't have range in the traditional sense of like being able to attack a hex away. So we'll enter deployment like that. Um. All the district tiles that are connected to the main plaza, as well as the certain special districts, are fortified. Attacking a unit located in one of these tiles uh, will pose heavy disadvantage on the attacker. Understandable. Fortifications can be breached by certain special units. Okay. So, uh, basically, I think what we're doing here is we're just going to focus down... Oh, we could focus down this outside one. So, he's basically just got... Uh, levies, which are just peasants. Um, so if I were to attack with this, I would lose pretty significantly. So we're going to have our warriors defending here. And then we, with these two units, are just going to swing in on the levies. Okay. We lost one of our units there. I think we're still pretty favored here. So we're just going to swing in on the levees again. These guys are going to defend again. This is totally fine. I think we got this here. Um, move this guy into the city. Range units swing. Range units swing. And the warrior. I mean, we could kill them. For your we, I think we take the shot. Just on the chance that we just finish them off there. We didn't quite get to finish them off. Um, maybe we trade there. Okay. So we trade. We traded two of our units, but it looks like we... Uh, yeah. We have captured this city. Actually sick. Uh, sorry. You sus, though? Um... Very, very cool. So we can probably just move these guys in immediately and begin the expansion of our empire, which is, uh, you know, going to be expanding. And we're going to be figuring things out as we go. I think maybe we need to play a little bit more of the resource game. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. Like, comment, subscribe. Do the YouTube thing. This is what YouTube's here to do. As always, I am Paradox, and I appreciate you watching. We'll catch you next time.